My name is Sophia and my poem is called A Fake Apology. You tell me you're sorry, but I see straight through you. Your apology is as useful as a toothbrush without toothpaste. The taste of your fake apology makes me mad, but the aftertaste is worse, and I don't know whether to pretend to forgive you or tell you the truth. How many more years must these lies go on, these lies that keep rolling off of your tongue? Will these fake apologies ever end? Will they keep going until your or my time comes to an end? Why even bother telling me your fake apologies? Wouldn't it be easier if you just told me honestly? Honesty is the best policy, or so I thought, but I think my thoughts are starting to rot and sometimes I don't know when to believe you or not. But honesty isn't your best policy, is it? Because more of your fake apologies are filling my head every minute. I wish your fake apologies didn't affect me, but these meaningless sorries are starting to get to me, and I'm starting to believe that the one at fault is me. But hopefully one day you'll get to see what these fake apologies are doing to me. I'm Andrea Schwartz, and this is my poem, Thoughts of the Feast. Within the grass, it stalks its prey, knowing it can't get away. Innocence, the prey enjoys dazzling feats, not comprehending the danger at its feet. Finally, a spring, so swift, so fierce, it brings this beast into a sore. My thoughts touch on, piercing deep, and I crowd in pain, only to find everyone asleep. Alone I wrestle, alone I stand, not knowing if this night will ever end. The heights of fancy are now ravenous wolves, joining my thoughts and leaving holes. And yet I hope, and yet I pray, for these thoughts to go away. They gnaw through my flesh like the beast I've described. All I want to do is hide. And yet I know it's useless, for no matter how hard I try, I will never fly. I am the fallen feast, forgotten, fearful, forfeit. And yet I cannot flee these beasts. Bombs blast beneath my feet, leaving blisters in a narrow street. My heart is tugged every which way, and all I can think to say is a tired yelp. Help. Finally, a light, dim like a firefly. It glows at the end of the tunnel. A once in a blue moon opportunity does shine, and I will make it mine. My name is Ella Stubbs, and my poem is The Truth Behind the Lies. A flurry of words, a stutter of lies, a smooth truth, something dark inside. When you write something that breathes, you can draw the people in. Nothing can really rhyme, things change all the time. Things will turn, twist, and most especially burn. We get tired after a day, so we wait while the night flies away. It'll run around, pulling bats out of their caves, owls out of their nests, but we don't behave. It gets mad as we rest, figuring we like the day the best, but this isn't a lie, but it also isn't true. A flurry of words, a stutter of lies. I always get lost in these butterflies. The night keeps going, finding moths and frogs, singing the nighttime song. We often ignore these beautiful things that stand right outside our doors. But after all, we're human, self-centered beasts. It's a wonder we didn't fall, yet. Yet we keep changing, we keep moving, on, forward, gone. We keep taking a second glance and second guessing everything. The night fireflies keep the dances, but they're all tiring. A flurry of words, a stutter of lies. I'm getting tired now. I can't wait to say goodbye. The goodbyes are not forever, they say. They only mean I'll see you again. But what about those times when the loved ones leave and their spirits curve upward like the grapes on a vine when we know we can't see them and they have left us to live on our own without their help? Lies are fragile truths. Sometimes we can see what the difference is, but most of the time we can't. It's a sad world, the one we live in, but it'll keep turning whether we're in or not. And that is the truth. A flurry of words, a stutter of lies. My name is Lola Walker, and my poem is What They Don't Tell You. Many know the Greek tale of Icarus. They say he was given the wings of wax, and he flew too close to the sun. They use his story as a tale of caution, saying things such as, You have married an Icarus, and he has flown too close to the sun. What they don't tell you is how he laughed as he fell, the wax scorching his skin, painting it shades of red and shades of gold. Feathers flew out around him like leaves in an autumn breeze, just close enough to touch. He reached out and grabbed them, handfuls in his hands, he fell. What they don't tell you is how he knew he was going to die. Given the wings, he knew he was going to fly, and he knew he was then going to fall. From below they saw pain, from below they saw panic, but what they didn't see was his laughter, his joy, his tragic happiness. Apollo watched as he fell, and though he didn't understand why, he laughed along with him. Even Dionysus didn't understand the insanity of this boy. 
Daedalus watched as his son fell. He watched his son die. He watched as his son plummeted to the bottom of the ocean. Poseidon watched as the boy fell to his domain. He brought the boy up to the shore, hidden from the eyes of others. Apollo came down from the sky to the boy, the boy that he loved. And that's what they don't tell you. That's what the historians hide. A boy loved a boy, and they didn't see that it was fine. I heard a beautiful quote once. It said, There is a certain beauty in setting the world on fire and watching from the center of it all. Historians hide more than you think. They hide the things that they fear. They hide things from relationships to who is truly at fault. Take Medusa, for example. We are all taught that Medusa was evil and that she did things to harm people. In reality, Medusa was hurt. She was hurt in the ways that we can't even imagine. Yet she was punished for the other's cruelty, the cruelty of a man. Historians feared that women would take advantage of this story. We hide the things that we fear, wishing to be seen as strong. To be seen as someone who never falls is a myth. Medusa fell and is seen as a symbol of the power of women. Icarus fell and is seen as a symbol of youth and pride. Icarus fell, arms wide, teeth bared, laughing. Medusa fell, head held high and powerful. We are taught that Medusa is evil. Historians didn't truly know her. Historians teach us that Icarus was an idiot. They didn't truly know him. People may say things such as we are mean or weird or wrong. They don't truly know us. My name is Michaela. The title of my poem is You Choose. I'd like to first welcome you into a world of dreams. It's expansive, never ending, and everyone hates it here, it seems. This is a common world to live in, so I can't say my version is unique, but I'd still like to tell you what it's been to me. And I'd like to show you, for you, what it could still be. It's cruel and dark and lonely. A wasteland cold enough to burn, where you're alone and exposed and it hurts, and you know that it would be so simple to get out of this place. But you can't make yourself. You're not okay. In this cruel dream, anxiety, help me, help me. Quietly, quietly, help me, help me. In this lonely dream, your calls aren't heard. It's just you and the ice. You're still getting burned. You're sad. Lights off, not moving, eyes closed. It's the middle of the day. Unhappy, alone. Panic attacks, depression, we've heard it all before. They tell you to get up and just be happy, but you're glued to the floor. Glued to the floor, stuck in this nightmare. They said once, it only gets worse. That's not what you needed to hear. So, welcome to my world. That is what it's like. But it doesn't have to be that way if you would spark a light. It might be slow, it will be hard, but you can open your eyes and let yourself be heard. I promise you can do it. I've seen it done before. And once you've gotten up, you will feel happiness more. The real question is if you're willing to look forward to the future and get up. Get up, move around. Open the window, turn on the light. Just don't lay back in that glue. Because when you are standing, the wasteland isn't there. It's just your room and you. So, welcome to my world, where it's cold and dark and rainy. But if I so choose, those things don't have to pain me. That is why I love this world where we're living. Because it will be what you make it, a nightmare or a dream. And I choose the latter. And if you want that too, then all you have to do is get up, open your eyes, and you will see.